So this, this is the Jumpman found on the Air Jordan 4 Golf. And this is St. Andrews in Scotland. One of these helped change the way the world looked at sneakers. It's counterculture, it's sought after, it's iconic. It's for lack of a better word, cool. The other is steeped in history, it's culture, it's elite, it's hallowed ground. It's for lack of a better word, traditional. So how do these two things that seem worlds apart actually come together? The answer, well, is because the Jumpman is not really about Michael Jordan anymore. And that's a good thing. I still remember the call. Hey Jock, would you, a sneaker guy from Pacoima, like to play around at St. Andrews, AKA the home of golf and the site of this year's British Open, which also happens to be celebrating its 150th iteration. Pretty sure they didn't say the Pacoima thing, but regardless, it was a dream come true for me. I get to play on the old course, walk the same path, cross the same bridge, hit out of the same pop bunkers the legends of the game did. Hogan, Sneed, Palmer, Nicholas, Watson, Ballesteros, Tiger, and now Jock Slade. Okay, maybe Jock doesn't fit that narrative, but I knew one way I was going to be able to make my own kind of mark. I was going to be one of the first, if not the first, to wear Air Jordans at the old course. And I did. I rocked the Air Jordan 4 Golf in the white cement colorway. Between the sneakers and the Muhammad Ali hoodie, I left my mark. Okay, we're on the last hole here at St. Andrews. Uh, what an amazing day. Big thank you to the folks over at Hugo Boss. I may never be the champion golfer of the year, but I could be the sneaker champion golfer of the year. That counts for something, right? But here's the thing. Why was wearing Jordans the first thing that came to mind? What is it about the Jumpman that it's my default setting whenever I go somewhere for the first time? Shooting a commercial, gotta be rocking J's. Interviewing an athlete, have to prove my bona fides with a fresh pair of retros. Doing a panel at SneakerCon, gotta come clean with a new Jordan collab. Showing off a sneaker I've worn to death to prove a point, hashtag wear your kicks. Time to show off these beat down pairs of black cement threes. I mean, it's not like I always wear Jordans everywhere I go. You should see me when I'm picking up dinner or running errands because I'm team Crocs all day, every day, baby. But when I have to make a first impression and in this business, you have to make a lot of first impressions, it's probably with the hottest pair of J's at the moment or a classic OG that everybody knows about. You would think with all of these J's that I'm like the best hooper in the world. No, I love to play, but wearing the Jumpman doesn't automatically mean basketball anymore. And really, it hasn't for a while now. They are the custom gold sneakers NFL players are rewarded when they rate a 99 on Madden. Celebrities wear them on the red carpet with tuxedos as a statement of how hip they are. Major League Baseball? It's littered with customized retros. It's so many of them that you think half the league has a Jordan brand deal. And NASCAR drivers. They win races in cars plastered in the same elephant print style you will find on most pairs of threes. Anywhere I go, a Jumpman is never far removed from my sight. Laptop stickers, ill-advised tattoos, iPhone cases, Drake songs, bootleg artwork of Kanye jumping over a Jumpman. It's a symbol of excellence. Nah, I wouldn't even say that. It is the symbol of excellence. Could you imagine how boring those stickers and tattoos would be if they were all just the letters YZY -Y instead of the Jumpman? Anyway, let's go back to the NASCAR example. Long before he became an iconic figure in our lives, Michael Jordan was a fan of the sports behind a wheel or handle. According to a 2017 High Snobiety history lesson, Jordan was riding dirt bikes as early as seven years old. In 2004, he founded his own motorcycle racing team along with legendary motorsports manager, Kurt Mahar. Jordan Motorsports went from dream to reality in a span of five weeks. How? Well, an ordinary racing team takes months, if not years, to put together. When sponsors hear that Michael Jordan is interested in putting a team together, it's a lot easier to get people to sign up and believe in the vision. While Jordan Motorsports would experience some success, the team ultimately folded several years later. MJ would try again in 2020 with the formation of 2311 Racing, signing Bubba Watson and Kurt Busch to be drivers of the number 23 and number 45 cards, respectively. Kind of see what Jordan is doing here. Anyway, Wallace would go on to win Talladega in 2021, and recently, Bush won at Kansas when I was there to visit the team. Not that I'm claiming credit for their win or anything like that, but I'm also not denying that my presence didn't have something to do with it. Wearing the Jumpman logo, that comes with, comes with a lot of responsibility. Do you feel any extra pressure knowing like you have like the goat on your back or the goat on your stomach at this point. <laughs> I mean, talking to you and seeing all of the, the team members here, yes, you feel that. As soon as I put that helmet on, man, it's, it's performance go time. And that's what I do every week. And I know that that's what other Jordan brand athletes do. 
you know you're part of the community, part of the fraternity and the sorority of the group. But when it's game time, it's game time. So here's the thing. It didn't always feel natural to see the jump man outside of the basketball court. A lot of throwback Instagram accounts love to point out the time when San Francisco 49ers legend Ronnie Lott wore red fours in the Super Bowl, or when a young Randy Moss wore white gold and purple Air Jordan 11s, a young Derek Jeter wore Air Jordan 14s, and a young Roy Jones Jr. wore the OG Jordan Trunners. These athletes are considered among the best in their respective sports, but we're all rocking the jump man a basketball specific logo appearing on boxing boots? It was daring for sure. Oh, by the way, what do those three athletes have in common? They were the stars of an Air Jordan 15 ad, an ad that I would argue is the greatest Jordan has ever made. The cinematic quality of the spot, the reverence displayed to Moss, Jeter Jones Jr. along with Eddie Jones and Ray Allen, the visual of Michael Jordan becoming the equivalent of an MCU in credit scene in one of his many iconic baggy suits that he made look so freaking cool. It was MJ's way of acknowledging that while he'll be around, the brand belongs to the next generation. Man, it was everything to a young Jacques Slade. Because at the time, there was a contingent of people who thought after MJ retired the second time, it was the end of Jordan as a brand. I mean, what's the value of the jump man without the guy who was the jump man? What now? Turns out, the jump man was just getting started. According to a research paper written for the MIT Sloan Management Review, okay, the preview text for the research paper written for the MIT Sloan Management Review, corporate logos that express a brand's symbolic, functional, or sensory benefits have a significant positive effect on customer commitment to a brand, and thereby a significant impact on company performance in terms of revenues and profit. The research also indicated that several visual symbols used as logos tend to be more effective than brand names at creating a sense of emotion connection with consumers. Let's not focus on the money that the Jumpman logo has made Nike because we all know it's in the billions and blah, blah, blah. We know that checking all of those boxes translates to sales. That's what the MIT paper is for. Instead, I want to focus on what the Jumpman does to us on a personal level and why we are drawn to it. When you see the Jumpman, most people think it's a silhouette of Jordan in mid-flight soaring in for a dunk. I bet there's a non-zero percentage of people who think the Jumpman was taken from the infamous 1988 NBA slam dunk contest that Dominique Wilkins actually won. Because when you look at pictures of Jordan performing the free throw line dunk, he kind of does a pose similar to the Jumpman, but no, the Jumpman was actually inspired by a 1984 Life magazine shoot where Jordan is pictured in his Team USA warmups and New Balance sneakers in a pose that would end up looking like a rough draft of the Jumpman. Huh, Jordan with New Balance. So the timeline would have been James Worthy, Jordan, Kawhi Leonard, Jack Hart. No, no, never mind. Look, a year later, Jordan signed with Nike, and for their photo shoot, he was wearing Nike gear in Chicago Bulls colors, rocking a pair of the colorway we would eventually call the Black Toe Jordan Ones. The Jumpman pose he makes with the Chicago skyline in the background would be a more elegant version of the pose he did a year earlier. But what he didn't do was actually dunk the ball. According to a 1997 Hoop Magazine interview, Jordan says, I wasn't even dunking on that one. People think I was. I just stood on the floor, jumped up, and spread my legs, and they took the picture. I wasn't even running. Everyone thought I did that by running and taking off. Actually, it was a ballet move where I jumped up and spread my legs and I was holding the ball in my left hand. So a ballet move is the origin of our symbol of excellence. But damn if that ballet move doesn't look good in the silhouette though. As a symbol, it encapsulates everything Jordan did on the court. Not only did he win six championships, he did it in the coolest way possible. Functionally, thanks to Tinker Hatfield, it was a natural fit on the tongues of his most iconic designs, like the Air Jordan 3 and the Air Jordan 4, and on every piece of apparel and gear you could think of. And when you saw the Jumpman, it ignited something within yourself, inspiring you to be the best version of yourself. Early on, it used to just mean basketball, but as Jordan steps further away from the spotlight, last dance notwithstanding, the Jumpman became something that looks at home on an NBA jersey, a golf shirt, a Michigan Wolverines football jersey, and on sneakers worth thousands of dollars. It's not easy to make a Jumpman. 
Ask Nike, ask Adidas, ask Reebok. They've all been trying to chase that dragon. Shaquille O'Neal famously created his own version of the jump man, the dunk man during his college days so he could own the trademark and take it anywhere he went. In an interview with All Urban Central, Shaq said that he understood that he was never going to take over the jump man, but he could be jump man adjacent and make money that way. While people make jokes about Shaq's shoes being Air Jordan knockoffs that are sold at Walmart, the big fella understood his standing in the sneaker world and profited accordingly. Penny Hardaway had a successful signature sneaker line in the 90s that lives on to this day, not to mention the cool one cent logo. But show that logo to a non-sneaker head and they would have a hard time figuring out what it meant. The late Kobe Bryant went through several logos as he went from Adidas to Nike and none of them stuck. By the time he got to the 2000s and beyond, athletes didn't even bother chasing the jump man. It just became amalgamations of their initials and jersey number. Tiger Woods, arguably the most famous name in sports after Jordan, started with the yin yang symbol that is a cult favorite among his diehard fans before moving to the TW logo he's been using for decades. Roger Federer, on the short list of GOAT tennis players, fought Nike for the use of his logo, a stylized RF as he transitioned from the swoosh to Uniqlo. Kevin Durant, Derek Rose, Kyrie Irving, Damian Lillard, and countless others aren't even in the conversation because while they might have creative uses of their initials and personal brands, C.D. Rose's logo, they don't inspire the same way the Jumpman does. I will say though, shout out to Kawhi Leonard's claw logo, but also Hall of Fame wide receiver Calvin Johnson. His logo is a remixed version of the Decepticon symbol with his initials and jersey number. It's hard to hate on anything that references Megatron, let's be honest here. Which brings us to LeBron. He was recently declared a billionaire by Forbes using metrics that, you know, is rich people stuff we don't need to talk about. What we can talk about is that LeBron did all of that without having a killer logo. Let's see, there's the crown logo, which is a creative use of his initials to let everyone know that he was basketball royalty the moment he stepped foot on the NBA court. Then there's his version of the Dunkman logo. To this day, I can't believe Shaq never called LeBron out for his Dunkman because Shaq calls out anything and everything. Anyways, Nike and LeBron never really promoted the Dunkman. It was tied to a particular color scheme that didn't get a yearly signature shoe refresh. But the crown? That was supposed to be his jump man, except it wasn't. It's his wings logo. Now, there's a thought experiment. Think about all of those Air Jordan sneaker hat fill design and replace the jump man with the wings logo. It's not pretty, huh? No disrespects to the wings logo, but history might have been different if we never got the jump man. Meanwhile, LeBron never bothered to go past the wings phase. And now he's a billionaire in spite of it. Hard to say he made the wrong decision, but you'll always wonder what could have been. Like everything Michael Jordan, timing played a huge role in his place in the culture. Jumpman or not, he doesn't become the icon he is today if he was born in a different era. If he was drafted in 74, sports writers would have denounced him as a Dr. J and David Thompson clone. If he was coming up in the same area as Kobe Bryant, he could have been shot out of championships like Tracy McGrady, Allen Iverson, and Vince Carter. 10 years later, he would have had an epic rivalry with LeBron and maybe neither of them get to even four championships because they were too busy knocking each other out in the East Finals. In today's generation, NBA Twitter would be blasting him for being nothing more than a more athletic DeMar DeRozan who refuses to shoot threes. Everything had to happen the way that it did for the Jumpman to become the symbol of excellence that it is today. And thank goodness for that. The Jumpman, for all it represents, in my opinion, is the ultimate logo. It surpassed its original intent and now represents something indescribably cool. The pursuit of excellence and its aspirational quality is bigger than a price tag. It's rooted in the bigger and more ambitious parts of the world that we all strive to be. And that is the story that will be told for years to come.